Hi, 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 everybody. Welcome back and happy Wednesday. Okay, so everybody's been asking me what's been going on, and I've received so many DMs. So we are literally in the middle of a transition right now. I just want to say this because this was the first live that I've been able to do that, um, aside from hot, messy topics. Jason and I all month are going to be moving back and forth. You're going to see him a little bit. You're not going to see him. I will post everything on the community tab. And then we have a business launch this month. So it's going to be a lot of shit. I apologize in advance. But what I'm not apologizing for is the fact that today we have So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey to discuss not only Vanderpump Rules, but the shit show that is The Valley. So before we jump in, go ahead, do all the the YouTube things. Smash the like button, show some love, get subscribed, and let's welcome Ryan. I'm Hello. here for a I'm here for a transition. This is amazing. Man, it's a, <laughs> I guess it depends who you ask. We've transitioned like three times in the last year. So I mean this is great. So the transition is kind of like Vanderpump rules into the valley up and Adam Live we're transitioning into a new phase. To Charles. New... Yeah, exactly. Amazing. What are we doing? I have no idea, but you know what's so funny is and I know that this isn't about the shows, guys, but Jason, since he was in Cirque and, you know, like he he did that for 13 years and he lived in different countries and he was in Japan for like three of those years. And then for me, I went to 11 or 13 different schools, something like that. We just are not afraid to move. And we feel like if we get bored with something, we're like, OK, let's go. I didn't think <laughs> that's that. amazing. I'm not Man. that adventurous at all. No, I mean, like, I cannot. That scares me. Change scares the crap out of me. So kudos to you guys. Ah, I mean, we'll see. I think it's going to be a really fun town. I'm excited. You know, like, we have some really good friends over there already. So I am, um, I'm ready to burn this city to the fucking ground. No. Kind of like, kind of like Tom Sandoval, right? Yeah, well, no, no, no affairs in the making of this movie. <laughs> but speaking of which, before we jump in, how have you been, man? I mean, I mean, good. I mean, good. listen, I mean, it's just, I mean, Vanderpump, once, once Vanderpump Rules hits, it gets like really intense because it's such a dark season. So that kind yeah. of affects my overall mood. But I mean, it's just been a, it's been a rough year. Uh, you know, just, it's just been wild. In fact, I'm going to Columbus, Ohio today. Because my grandma, unfortunately, she's 100 years old and she's about to pass away in the next wow. couple of days. So, you know, I, I got to, you know, I got to be with her a couple months ago, but it's like looks like she's in her final day. So I'm going but I'm going there really to kind of support my dad and my sister and just uh, be there for a little bit. So this is this will be the most fun my day is right now talking oh about God. Vanderpump Rules. So, well, man. We're always sending you all of the love and positive vibes. But yes, then let's let's change up the focus really quick <laughs> and i want to start off with something in somebody that guys i know that ryan bailey champions this person i know that he loves this person i know that he sits <laughs> there and puts this person on a pedestal and this person has spoken out here we go <laughs> Okay, so he goes on to say that though to have a water a water connoisseur event was an absolute shit show. But the funny thing about this is I feel like Jax created his own sports bar, which, by the way, let me give credit where credit is due. And Jax is a fucking liar about a lot of shit. I've known him for a long time. It's been over a decade. When he thought that I was dating Miss California, he went and slept with her and then came <laughs> back to me and said, hey, bro, are you with her? And I was like, yeah, man, we're together. <laughs> but I was also trying to like hide the fact that I was gay. And he said, oh, well, I hooked up with her the other night. And I was like, what? So I don't have any respect for Jax. I also don't have a vendetta or a chip on my shoulder because I am gay and that is okay. 
like, <laughs> we're, we're good now. But my <laughs> point is here with him, it's like the guy in the fact that he created a business with his name on it with three business partners and had no overhead, probably fucking smart. Aside from marrying Brittany Cartwright, second smartest thing he ever did. Well, I mean, that's, that's on its way out, but I mean, that, this is what, this is exactly why I love Jax. Like the, the, and this is why some of the Vanderpump rules, it's gone on so long because like they, they don't even see when they're being hypocrites about everything, but you're right. What's so smart about that business. And I visited Jack's saloon for the first time last Tuesday and they did kind of that watch party thing, is but they didn't saloon? give, I think it's like Jax's saloon or J ja yeah, Jax or Jax's studio, Jax's studio city. Sorry. Um, but it, it was amazing they didn't give him the mic last week so that they gave him a mic this week so he could like do commentary over and i thought that was insane but yeah people don't realize there was already a liquor license for that place so that's why they were able to get it up and running so quickly and they just used his name he's like a figurehead a mascot if you will so it's really i mean it's smart in a lot of ways but it seems like it's potentially harming his relationship but jack's there talking about how fake everything is and the water event I mean, that's reality shows to a T, though. And and mind you, when Jax was on, there were fake scenes as well. But I just think it's hysterical that he's like, he's the reality show god that knows how reality shows work. Um, but I just, I love clips like that. I think it's just so funny, so Jax. The guy can't get out of his own way, but that's why we kind of, that's why he's good to watch. He's great reality television. Excuse me to anyone who's watching with their small children, please cover their ears right now. I'm going to give you three, two, one. Uh -oh. Okay. This to me reminds me of a whose dick is bigger contest. So I feel like what Jax is doing right now is he's like, this is fake. This is all staged. Wait a minute, Jax Taylor. <laughs> and we're going to get into the Vanderpump Rules episode first and then the Valley. But wait a minute, Jax Taylor, because of the simple fact that you obviously clearly orchestrated and you admitted to it, Alex showing up to guys night to yes. throw Luke off guard. And then you also admitted in a podcast that producers wanted you to go to every single person until they got the right edit of the right conversation of you talking about Kristen Doty and her her baby journey. What is it? Everybody, everybody in here at this point, like, you know, the audience is way more sophisticated than anybody gives the audience credit for these days. So we can see these things 10 miles away. Like, and, and even though they're real feelings, these are all setups. Like, remember, like there's a, there's a crew sheet, there's a call sheet. They know who they're going to be filming with that day. They have to mic everybody up. That takes a little bit of time. Like, you know, surprises are here and there in reality television. It's not what they want to portray. And Jax knows this. The best part of that clip was at the very end, Jax is like, well, now when the Valley comes on, he's like, now here's some real stuff. Here's some real stuff, real people, people. And he's just selling. He's a carnival barker. He's trying to sell his wares. He's trying to put this on the map and he wants this show to succeed. But I think it's funny when he's trying to take down Vanderpump rules in the same breath as hyping up his show that is so real because Adam, you and I both know, like there are so many stage scenes in the Valley. That doesn't mean what they're arguing about isn't real, but they do know what they're going to be talking about going into these things. Right. Which is the legitimate makeup in way of reality TV, right? So producers tell you, we're doing an all cast, which means all cast comes together. And then they tell everybody what we're looking for. They have X amount of time to get the shot. There's a lot of money that goes into production. If you guys think that they're not privy to these conversations of what they need to deliver in that moment, that is wild to me. Yeah, it's not, not a documentary. People... It's yeah. not just a documentary where they're hoping to capture something. They have a plan on what they hope to get. There still might be surprises within that plan. Like we do have that happen sometimes, or they do have that happen, but it is highly structured. It doesn't mean it's not real, but it's highly structured because they're on a budget. They're on time constraints. They have crew people that can only work like 10 to 12 hours a day. So they've got to make sure they're getting as much as they can, the biggest bang for their buck. Right, exactly. Now, speaking of that too, I have to, I don't even know where to start from last night. We can go in chronological order or we can just go based off of the yeah, moments. But this, <laughs> what were your thoughts, please? Okay, listen, I mean, Okay, so everybody wanted Ariana in scenes with Tom. Now you got it. 
And this is the anger that you're going to get because this is three and a half months after this. This is this is why Ariana doesn't want to do scenes with Tom because she is angry as hell and she has a right to be angry as hell. So like this, is I, I am so team Ariana and I hate to break it into teams like this, but this is what she was trying to stay away from because this anger is there. She doesn't want to have to show this on camera. But she has every damn right to be angry. And yes, it's going to come off brutal to some of us, to the audience of like, oh my God, she's so angry. But like, yeah, she should be angry. This is exactly how she should be feeling. Unfortunately, there are cameras there. So she has not worked this out or processed this because she hasn't talked to Tom except for these moments. So yeah, I mean, I think this is what you get. But unfortunately, I think then this is used for fodder. You know, and instead of like, I feel like this season, it's like, man, this is a real, we could really dissect all the guys behavior, but instead now we're deep into the season and women are turning against women and you know, Lala's turning against Ariana. Brock sure has a lot to say about all of this. He's like the voice of wisdom for some reason, even though he has certain mistakes that he's done in his life. So it's a shit. Sh Sorry. It's a, it's a, it's a crap no, show. At this my point. God. It's it, a shit show. Say it. It's a shit show. It's a shit show. And it's, it's unfortunate because every time I go into this, I said this on the show today, I was like, I, I go in happy every week. And I don't know what I expect from this show, but like within the first three minutes, I realize how dark and sad it is. And then I'm like, Oh God. And that's why the Valley almost is light by comparison, even though it's still dark. It just, it doesn't have the Scandaval stank on it. And at this point you have to realize Tom Sandoval is not going to learn. He's not going to understand ever what he did or how it affected people. Like, cause we know now, even in the interviews he's doing after the fact, he's never learned. He's not, he doesn't really know about the pain he's caused. So right. I think he's now positioning it as Ariana. What a, she's so full of rage. Of course she's full of rage, dude. You did that to her. How many times have we seen Tom Sandoval rage over these last 11 seasons? But yeah, it's the woman's fault. She's full of rage, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's so frustrating to read some of the comments about these things. I want to answer two things here. Um, I'm so over Lala and her entitlement. If others tried to get her to speak with Randall after three months, she would have burned the ground they stand on. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, Pam Robertson, also thank you for the super chat. But then there was this other one that I just wanted to bring up. Does it take four years to get a liquor license? So for what you guys, for some of you who don't know, a liquor license based off of the... Um, I guess you can say the square mileage of the area that they're in. They can only allot so many, so many liquor licenses. So for Jax, for example, what Ryan said was this building came with a liquor license. Now to put that in context for you guys, pump restaurant, the restaurant that Lisa and Ken left because they said that the land owner, the landlord was trying to, increase the rent he has a lawsuit or has an argument that they said that they would leave the liquor license with the building with that restaurant that liquor license is worth over one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. they don't have to leave it with the restaurant they can take it with them easily and i think the moment that he started talking to press that's when they were like fuck you we don't have to give you shit that wasn't in writing that was an oral conversation now, the same thing goes like for Jackson, them, they lucked into a situation and for um, Katie and Ariana, they finally have been approved for a liquor license. So they, based off of what Brittany Cartwright said last night on Watch What Happens Live, should be opening fairly soon. But now going back to it and all of this, I'm just sitting here looking at it and I think that a few things are being very performative in this season and I do have to agree with Jax on that. Just looking into it, like Lala, I feel like knows in order to make a great season, not everybody can kiss Ariana's ass. She knows that, right? Yeah. So yeah. somebody has to be the determining factor, the the person of opposition, right? And I think that she's like, you know what? I'll take that. I think Sheena wants to take it, but Sheena's so afraid of not being able to deliver on it and being on the outs. For Brock. I think that Brock is trying to solidify his role and show why he is important and he is an asset to the show. So he is now adding in certain situations like Katie fuck Max, which is so aggressive. <laughs> like that is so aggressive. By the way, guys, <laughs> talk to Max yesterday. If you guys are interested and you like you some Max, um, Max just joined OnlyFans. So 
<laughs> you guys can go check out Max Boyens on OnlyFans. But Wait, are you jo- are you joking? I'm about to <laughs> Hold on. No, I think let me see what he texted me real quick. Hold on. You want to see my junk, dude? He said oh my God. <laughs> He said, "Hey bro, I'm dropping an OnlyFans tonight." He's like, "I don't care if you tell anybody." Um <laughs> But he's like, yeah, just wanted to see how you and Jason were doing, blah, blah, blah. But no, he dropped an OnlyFans last night. I'm not making this shit up. Go, go look it up. Get well, the getting is good. By the way, this Max, his penis must shoot diamonds because every girl on Vanderpump <laughs> seems to have hooked up with this guy. And I just think Wait, it's wild. It? But also, I think I love that Katie's being blamed for this and not Max. Like, I love that Max is like some like little sheep in the woods that like, oh, big bad Katie made him sleep with it. Like, ma- like that's ridiculous. Max is hooked up with every girl on Vanderpump Rules. Wait like, a this minute. Guy Who is all legend. has he hooked up with? He's hooked up with Sheena, Dana, da- Dana, Kathan. Kristen, uh, Kristen Doty, Katie. Um, there was a couple other people that worked at Tom Tom, but never fully made I the know show. For a fact, there are many people who worked at Tom Tom. Yeah. So he, like I'm saying, he went through. I mean, listen, listen. I wouldn't be surprised, like in season twelve, if it comes out about Lala. If it comes, like at this point, I feel like Lisa Vanderpump. No. Maybe like no. I, I feel like it's. I you know. I can't, I can't believe Max hooked up with Lisa. I can't believe that in the jacuzzi. Can I say too? I got the most aggravated text. You know how like us doing this sometimes like you're not always going to please everybody. Like yeah. I can never please Teddy Mellencamp, and I'm okay with that. But <laughs> <laughs> with that, I got a message from one of my good friends who is in this world and also was featured last season. Um. And my friend said to me, Adam, you did a video and it's so fucked up. That is not what I meant. And I said, the video was pretty much claiming that this person said that they were heavily encouraged to drink, that production encouraged them to drink, that Lisa encouraged them to drink in order to make the good edit, right? And all I said was in my decade long, you know, situation of being there working for lisa that was not my experience and i don't believe that because i've been a lot around a lot of situations there are trays passed you can grab a prosecco you cannot grab a prosecco that's how it was it wasn't like i mean sure given like crazy Kristen doty yes was it easy to you know like kind of sway her with shots and shit yeah 100 she was going to take whatever you gave her but not everybody was that way. And he messaged me and he said, Adam, you fucked up. And you said that I said this and that's bullshit. And then I sent him the screenshot of his exact quote. And I said, this is what you said. This is what I repeated. And he's like, but you know, that's not what I meant. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You got to mean <laughs> what you say and say what you mean, motherfucker. Because there are differences <laughs> and that is not fair. Just saying. Whew. Good stuff. Yeah. Good, Good stuff. stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so <laughs> what were your thoughts when Ariana ended up calling Tom an attempted dog murderer? Well, listen, I mean, God, I'm more, I'm still a fe- 500 laxative pills. Like, I'm still on that from last week of like, my God. And then if you guys watch the Vanderpump Rules after show on Peacock, they go into that more. And Tom, like, makes a point to say they were organic laxative pills. Like, that matters. But, like, was still like, oh, that dog, that dog crapped everywhere, dude. And it's like, yeah, of course, because you left pills around. But listen, I, I think she's fully enraged at this point. And to her, that is her child. Like a lot of our pets are our children in a certain sense. So yeah, she's going to throw out those kind of things. Do I think Tom was trying to murder the dog? Of course I don't. But I think it's also just shows to like a current point of where his mental state is. He's so concerned, I think, with himself that he doesn't, he even misses the small things. In like, right. where's the dog? Where's the cat? How are things going? And I, I, I don't know. So that's, I think it's more of just a point of, his behavior up to this point leads for accidents like that to happen because he's not thinking outside the bubble of himself. Right. Okay. No, that makes sense. I'm also noticing, and I know, I I think that it's a safe space to be able to talk to you about this because we are both friends with Sheena, which is so funny because when I met you, you were terrified of her. Yeah. And yeah. terrified of meeting her. Yeah. But you have come so far. 
I did that at your show. Actually, I got to meet her for the first time, and because she, you know, uh, so yeah, no, I, I do. Sheena is so unapologetically Sheena. Sheena doesn't even understand why I think she's such a great reality person. It's unfortunate when you see somebody that you start to know a little bit and you see the heat they're getting and you see why they're getting the heat they're getting. Mm -hmm. Like Sheena is one of those people that seems like when you're in her like, you know, face, she'll believe whatever you say. She really takes you at your word for better or worse. And I also think that Sheena, you know, admittedly, wants to be a part of everything. She wants to be up there. She wants her name to be out there. She's trained for this since she was a little girl. Like she really wants this, whatever this is. And so it's, it's kind of meshed up for her and her whole, yeah. Yeah. But no, it's like, that's her whole being. So this is like, the show is everything that she wants. She wants opportunities. She wants this. And I will say she is such a, uh, a sweet person, but like, I, I see sometimes the things that she says, I'm like, Oh man, that's not going to go over. Well, that's not going to go over well. And sometimes you just like, I had a conversation with her a a while ago where I said that the artist formerly known as Raquel, Rachel Levis, I said, I thought it was really, I'm not a huge fan of her still, but I thought it was brave that she did go to a mental health facility. I thought it was much, I thought it was, it took a lot of courage to do that instead of coming back on the show. And she disagreed with me and she said, no, Sandoval, that was much more courage to like do the show. And I was like, why? He's getting paid for it. Like, that's not courage. That's him just trying to pump up his own ego. So you just went head to head. No, this wasn't, it it wasn't a negative conversation. It was, but I I was just, but like you you give your opinion, you didn't shy away. Yeah, I just. But I, but I also understood that I thought it was fascinating that she really, truly thought that that was brave of him to do that when I thought it was all, well, like, man, that's free advertising for any kind of redemption arc he wants to give himself, which he's not doing a very good job at it. But I thought it was brave to actually take yourself out of it. Like, I still don't understand why she's doing the podcast. I know she's telling her story, but I still think she wants to be a part of the orbit still. But yeah, like Sheena definitely believes these things. And sometimes I feel like she might learn the reality of certain situations after the fact. But I just get where And also Lala is in her ear at all times. And they're very, very close. But yeah, I mean, I still, I really love Sheena because she just is so Sheena. Like she's just herself for better or worse. And that's what we want on reality television. I think, you know, what are your thoughts though? Real quick, since we're on the topic of Sheena, what are your thoughts about her? Cause you're seeing a little bit more of a snippy side with her and Brock this season. Yeah. What's going on there? I don't know at all. And I also know that Sheena's mom, Erica, who I love watches. So I'm being very careful with how I say this. I just find that, we are showing a lot more dimension to the relationship. And by the way, as somebody who has been, I, I'm married, I've been in my same relationship now for 10 years, sometimes you just can't stand the person. And that's okay. What you do is you just take your ass and you go up to the local gas station, you grab a bottle of water, then you go to Starbucks, you jump on the phone with whoever the fuck, and yeah, kind of just take it down a second. But... In this situation, we have a lot of cameras on us. And for Sheena and Brock, Sheena's like, God, you annoy me. Like, even when you talk, you don't even know what the f- you're talking about. And I'm like, <laughs> what is going on? Wait, does Sheena have your location, Adam? Oh, my God. No, I'm going to share it with her right now. <laughs> I'm going to see if she, I swear to God. Wait, should, I, should I should I should I send my location to her too at the same time? No. Uh, no, I mean listen, those like the tracking location, that didn't surprise me either. Sheena does seem like that person that she like wants to know where everybody is. Like it makes her feel safe to know. But also the Max thing, also I always wonder, are Brock and Sheena like almost working in conjunction? Like, Brock, I want you to bring this up and then I'm gonna act mad at you when you do. Like part of me wonders like, or is Brock just really going full steam ahead and trying to make a name for himself? Like, I do wonder if it's working in conjunction sometimes. I just want to show you that I ended up sharing my location. (laughs) So now she has 57 people she tracks. Sheena, please. It says you started sharing location with Sheena Marie. (laughs) I just want to be number 57. Well, now if you ever, if you ever hook up with Max Boyens, she'll know. Um, well, that's not uh, going to happen. Yeah. So, <laughs> thanks. No, well, no, it's just a weird, like, listen, this, this season is obviously weird. We knew it was going to be weird, but I think I walked away last night really solidified in the fact of, 
I know they couldn't have done this because they wanted to hop on the, you know, the making as much money as they could from this, but they really should have waited another six months to pick up cameras. Like, this is why you see the anger from Ariana. I think six months coming back and actually seeing where everybody landed, you know, after not being on TV for a while would have been much better. You would have had a less dark show and you probably would have gotten to the heart of the matters a lot quicker. But the fact that they pick back up cameras so quickly after you're going to get this. It, and by the way, then they try to almost gaslight the audience and other cast members into thinking like, why is Ariana so angry? This is crazy. It's not that crazy. Like, come on. Like everybody's been in a relationship that's broken up and you probably haven't talked to the person for a good long time after the breakup. Like this is what happens when you're forced to be around somebody. I, I don't know. That's just how I see it. I just feel like you would have gotten a lot stronger of a season if you would waited. Okay, fair. Now, my next question is, what did you think about the Dana Cathan cameo? Oh, uh, I didn't really think I, I mean, she didn't really do anything. So, I mean, she had like one comment. I thought, listen, I mean, she does the podcast with Katie. So of course that's, you know, and, and I, I didn't really think, what did you think about it? Um, well, I know why she was originally there. Um, apparently the reason that producers originally brought her there was because she, when they sold season eight and we started it off with her and Max hooking up, it was like she had this real relationship with Max, which obviously was a lot for show. And she was supposed to have a conversation with Katie, Katie being one of her best friends that Katie hooked up with Max and how that made Dana feel. And I believe they filmed that conversation, but that conversation was oh. not included. That's why she was there. Oh, see, that makes way more sense. But I think maybe also there, there, there also may be like a little trepidation there because so many new viewers to Vanderpump that might not have even hit season eight. They might not right. have even watched that season and you're not showing Max on camera. You're just talking about him. So to have Dana have that conversation, listen, I hope they have that conversation on their podcast. Maybe they already have, but I think that would be an interesting conversation because I would be curious what Dana thought of the hookup after, you know, like, why would you do that, Katie? But like, again, Katie can do whatever she wants, like, honestly. And I think yeah. Max, if you watch that after show, she was like, Max was the one flirting with me all night. He was the one that kept being in my face flirting with me, you know? Max OnlyFans Boyens is definitely a flirt. And he's a good looking guy. Have you met Max? Yeah, I've met Max uh, once or twice. Yeah, I I absolutely love Max and he is, he's a good looking guy. He's a dick, but he's, he's so much fun. <laughs> and I, I have, so, I have so much fun with him, but okay. So now moving on to the next, I have to ask you a question because Sandoval will obviously argue this, especially when the line is drawn in the sand at the beach by James Kennedy, DJ James Kennedy. Um, Sandoval says he did not fire Ann. Instead, he gave her a couple of days off. She showed up in her suit. She wanted to work for a girl boss. She was incredibly optimistic. I think that she really felt like this was a real thing. I think that producers obviously pushed this as a storyline. Poor girl was collateral. And then she decided, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to start a podcast that said we signed an NDA, which completely yeah. goes against an NDA. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like the dumbest thing that you can do, but okay. And we like you, we like you a lot. Um, what are your thoughts about the whole Tom Ariana and situation? How do you feel? I mean, that's a tough situation. Listen, I think that's like a, a that's a, 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 not a manufactured storyline, but it is, I think a suggested storyline of what if this happened? What if that happened? Yeah, man, I can see Tom's point on this of being bummed. Like, I don't want to have you around the house and then you go work for my ex after you know where all the bodies are buried. Um, but Anne is a part of the Vanderpump like economy, as I call it. And now Anne is making money off of this as well. I, I mean, it seems like she is such a nice person and I'm sure she had to put up a lot with a lot of stuff about Sandoval. Um, but like, this is what happens when you have like kind of betrayal and stuff. I mean, Ariana certainly doesn't have any loyalty or doesn't need to have any loyalty to Sandoval at this point, but I thought the, Anne doing that and also doing it in their house. And then like, of course, Tom, like overhearing, which is like, how do they even do that? Does the producer producer go, Hey, come, come listen to this right 100%, now. That's exactly you know? how that happened. 
producers were like, hey, by the way, Anne's downstairs interviewing with Ariana. Oh, my God. Somebody wrote, where was the white noise machine when it was needed? Exactly. The white noise machine should have, like, enveloped all of that that sound completely so Tom wouldn't have to hear this conversation. But I don't know. This... And also, I mean, Tom obviously is angry about a lot of things. So, of course, like, it's a bad situation for Anne to be in. And he's like, you you just have to take a couple days off, you know? Like, and, and thank God they didn't film that scene because I would have felt really bad for Anne, you know? But he ultimately fired her. I Well, yes. I mean, well, Adam, listen, I do not stand up for Tom Sandoval at all. But, like, would you not, like, say, I don't know if I trust working? Like, I mean, e even if take all personalities out of it, wouldn't that kind of be like, yeah, I don't know if we should actually continue to work together. It's see, obviously you're looking, obviously I'm not, you know, who you want to be working for. And I'm getting a little nervous because you do know so much about my personal life. No, I've only had two assistants ever in my, in my whole thing being on YouTube. And one of them was family. And unfortunately it didn't work out. And the other one took my YouTube analytics and finances and shared it with people and it got back to me which was a total breach what? of contract oh yeah God. so <laughs> so no i i in that moment and it's and it's not the same but in that moment that was a breach of trust for me where i was like it's i'm like a one off like all i all i need you to do is show me yourself one time that you're capable of something and i'm good so i do yeah. see it in that capacity as well now I do have a very important question for you, and please don't feel awkward. If you do feel awkward, then I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Do you wash your underwear? Yeah, but to be to 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 be fair, I uh, I I I wear basketball shorts most of the time. In like I I'm usually behind a podcasting microphone. Um. So yeah, but of course I wash my underwear. Yeah, that's you don't obvious. wear them four times in a row and work out. No, in them and that's then... that. No, God, no. In fact, that was so weird because Tom is so obsessed with his image that I'm shocked that that would even be true. Like that blew me away. Those are the little pieces of information that I still love on Vanderpump Rules where you're like, oh, that's interesting. Tom doesn't wash his undies. OK, got it. You know what's so funny is I always thought because Tom, it's like selective hearing, but selective grooming because in all of the time that I knew Tom from working behind the bar at Sir to just the evolution of it, right? He was always so quick on the eyebrow, shaving the forehead. His hair was perfect. <laughs> his skincare, he had makeup on. I remember when James fucked his face up, like when that whole Kristen, James, Tom situation happened. Um, really? At, I forgot what it was called. Um, yeah, it was at that restaurant. It was on camera where, where they got into the big fight and they were throwing blows and oh yeah, yeah. Tom had a full face of makeup and he tried his best, but there was a lot of grooming that was involved. But then I remember when I would be around Tom and this is just a matter of my opinion, not speaking it as a fact, because I think we all interpret things different. I remember you know, like I would s smell like straight cigarettes and just like it, it it didn't like what you, it's all a sensory thing, right? So what you smell doesn't match what you see and the, the, there's different things. Not a bad thing. Tom is a good looking guy and I'm not saying he always smells bad or anything. I would just smell cigarettes and like party, you know? So yeah. I that's not saying that he doesn't change his underwear three times a day, <laughs> by the way. I'm just going to throw that out there. But it is it is weird to sit there and kind of like hear that because I'm like... Yeah, I like that he's like, Matthew that. he's like Matthew McConaughey, all natural. And by the way, the shaving the forehead always still cracks me up. And I thought, I thought Tom might get so bummed out this year that he just lets his forehead go and he comes back with like a big beard on his forehead because he shaved it so much. And he just stopped taking care of himself. But it seems like he's trying to like, we see him in the workout room nonstop. And you can only imagine this guy is working out intensely on laxative pills and water pills. So there's got to be a lot of smells coming from that house in, in that corner of the room. You know what I'm saying? That's fucking disgusting. Also, you guys, I keep reading. Everybody hit like. I don't even know how this works, but like hit the like button. I keep reading this. So let's hit the like button. Is that, <laughs> is that a thing? That's the thing. Okay. How did you feel about, first of all, by the way, too, I think I saw this on your Instagram, but you said that you like Tom and Katie's new dynamic in their relationship. I agree. 
Well, no, listen, I said they have this kind of cute flirty thing, but the only reason they have that is because Katie is well aware that Schwartz can never be the man that she wants. And she's not at that rage place like Ariana is with Tom. So Katie has boundaries now. So in that sense, it's like they have this kind of flirty thing where I think she realizes like, oh, he'll, he's ne he can never be the person that I need to love me. But like there is still like this mild flirtation. In fact, like I think that's why it's cute. I mean, they might hook up somewhere down the line. They'll never be together again because I think Katie has set like a firm boundary in her head. But yeah, when when somebody knows what they'll let like a person get away with and they're like stand firm in that, you can be however you want. So it's kind of cute to watch those scenes. In fact, I would just imagine that Schwartz would take it more seriously than Katie of like, she was giving me the vibe, dude. I think I might have a chance. And I don't think yeah. he ever has a chance with Katie ever again. But I think those flirting scenes, and it's interesting to see after like a divorce a couple of years past that you can still be that way. You can still be eventually get to a place where you can be kind of laughing because that's real pain that Katie went through. And obviously Schwartz as well. And by the way, guys, today on my pod, so bad it's good. Terry Maloney, Katie's mom is on. And we oh. had a wonder, we had a wonderful conversation about Schwartz and Katie. Max Boyens gets brought up, but it's a really wonderful, lovely conversation from a mom's perspective, which I really loved. Actually, that's fucking amazing. Yeah, she. By the way, she's like uh, she's re she reached out to me like a year, like a year. Like she listens to the show sometimes, which was like boggled my mind. But she was so nice, and especially everything I was going through with my mom, she would always check in on me. She's like a real like she's just such a mother type, or she reminds me so much of my mom. But it's also interesting to hear a perspective of somebody whose daughter is on a reality show for so long and still like. You know, she 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 knew all these people. She knew Jax in his 30s. She knew like she watched them kind of grow up and she knew them before reality television. So I thought that was it was a really interesting conversation. Yeah, no. And I also think, too, I feel like I've know I've met Terry multiple times. Um, and by the way, I'm going to go ahead and share this with you guys right now so you guys can check it out anywhere that you get your podcast. Make sure you go check it out right here where you can see Terry Maloney. I have met terry off and on over the last again decade because that's the amount of time that we were around and terry is the sweetest woman ever actually all of the moms Brittany cartwright's mom was an absolute sweetheart james kennedy's mom is a sweetheart kristen doty's mom stassi's mom like sheena's mom i absolutely love it, there's not a mom that's like not a, a monster out of the cast yeah, yeah like a monster like I'm, Jax kept his mom away, but even <laughs> her, I bet is not. I bet you she is not a monster, and she is just a sweetheart. But back to it, well, really yeah, quick. yeah. Also, you can watch that video on YouTube if you want to see uh, her lovely face as well. So, uh, but yeah. Anyway, sorry to plug. It just that that just came out today, and I'm really proud of that interview. So, no, um, my God, I can't yeah. wait to go back to BravoCon. Well, you're the one that told me it's not happening this year. No, it's not happening this year. So we got to wait a whole nother year to do this again. No, no, no. I think, well, yes, you will technically from the year that you went, you would wait a whole nother year anyways. But I don't believe that it's going to be, it was, a, you know how like it would have been in October or November of this year? Yeah. I think it's going to be in January, February, March of 2025. Ah, so I got it. So far off. It's just okay. not going to be in 2024. Okay, that actually is very comforting. I thought it was going to be like two years after the fact. Okay, that's great. No, 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 no. And then I guess my next thing is, is I wanted to transition over to the Valley. So I asked everybody in a poll which one they're enjoying more, Vanderpump Rules or the Valley. And I wanted to ask you, where do you lean? Well, I mean, Vanderpump is always the home team favorite, but they're like I said earlier, there's so much in it. Like there's 11 seasons of damage on that show. The Valley is kind of like this interesting blend because it's not attached to Scandal in certain ways. You still have Jackson Doty. And I will say Jackson Doty, like you, they just know their way around a scene. They're really highly watchable in terms of just like, you're like, oh God, are you kidding me? Like Jack's still like, inspires the same anger I used to have with Jax in like this, but you get to watch new people. I love that Janet and Jason are on there. I love, uh, I mean, Zach, what's going on with Zach's hair? Is that like Wait, Zach's hair? She, she has like the hairline of early Teresa Giudici. Like it was, it, I, I like you, it. I really like it. Do you know Zach or no? Uh, no, I met him for the first time last week in person. I mean, I've heard 
I've heard people talk about Zach or I've heard all of those people that know Zach. I don't know him personally. No. Okay. Let me tell you really quick. Zach used to work for Nicole. Is it Scherzinger? Sure. Whatever. From, from the Pussycat Dolls? Dolls? Yes. So he used to be her assistant. Thank you for the thumbs up. Whatever the fuck. I appreciate you. Um, he used to be her personal assistant, right? So he traveled with her. He knows Brittany from Kentucky, whatever. Last night, from what I saw, and I never got close with Zach. I never got close with a lot of people because they were very much so in their single, going out to the Abbey every night till 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. I had already been with my now husband for like five, six years, four or five years at that point. I wasn't going out to the Abbey till 3 or 4, three or four in the morning. So we would see each other in passing or at the restaurants, whatever. But there was always a group that I always called the groupies. And when I did Sheena's show at one point, I even referred to some of her friends as groupies. And I think that that really, like, she took that as an insult. She's like, what do you mean? My friends don't do that and follow me around just because they want to be seen or heard or noticed. And I'm like, yeah, girl, they do. One million percent. And I can list them off because I was around for a long time. I always felt like Zach was one of those people who was trying to have a sort of come up. But with that aside, I also really always liked him. I just felt like there was a hidden motive. Now, going into the show, and I see this conversation happening with Kristen, I have known Kristen for a long ass time. And Kristen, she lied. The only one lie that I feel like I can speak on that she committed to was that she did not hook up with Jax when she was trying to lie to Stasi. Otherwise, <laughs> the girl does not lie. And if she is sitting there saying that not only me, but me and Luke sat there and listened to you come to my house and say that this woman was a Republican and a racist, and he's covering his face like this, like, oh shit, it's about to come out. I'm like, dude, you wanted it. You asked for it. Be careful what you asked for because see, you got it. Exactly. You see a lot of these people that have been around reality TV, but have never been fully in reality TV. Mm -hmm. These are the normal conversations people have for better or worse. You'll be on the phone or texting with your friend and be like, oh, I bet this person is such and such, or I bet this person is such and such. The only thing that sucks is that Kristen brought it up on camera. Like, you know, I do believe a version of this conversation happened at some point in regards to Michelle Lally. You know, I, I you know, but I also probably think it was tongue in cheek. It was joking. But if you get that in Dodie, like it's like give Dodie the ball. Dodie will spill it because she is used to reality television. So this was kind of like a welcome, welcome to the welcome to the OC, you know, welcome to the Valley. Like this is what it's going to be like. And that's why I like. Anybody on that show, I always say it's going to be fascinating to watch this right now and see how they've changed by season two. And is this worth it for some people? Like, is this worth it to have every one of your little secrets, your little like private conversations be pulled out into the light for reality television fodder? You know, it's like that's what's going to be interesting to watch from my perspective, because all of these people talk on everyone. I mean, all of us talk on everyone all of the time. It's just that we're not on reality TV. So I think that's what's going to be really interesting to watch because I think a version of that conversation happened. It probably right. wasn't meant or intended the way that Dodie put it out there, but it still happened. And then, I mean, but then you have like, you know, Michelle Lally's husband, who they're now separated, coming off as such a pompous ass. Like it makes Jax Taylor look like a well, kind, gentle human now. being. Are they really? Well, that's what Brittany Cartwright said last night on Watch What Happens Live. Oh my God, I missed that part. I didn't see that. That's wild. Yeah, I they're can't back believe together. that. He is. So, he comes off as such a jerk. I mean, the guy definitely comes off as a douchebag, and he has this way of him where he's like, "No, this is an important night to me, and it's not a party. It's not a whatever. It's it's this. It's a it's a sophisticated sit down." And she's like, "Stop saying that." And he's like, "You don't know Capri." Like I know Capri, <laughs> okay? So you don't know Capri like I know Capri. So it's not the same to you. It doesn't matter the same. And she's like, you're a douchebag. You are literally Shep Rose in a California state of mind with a nicer house. And mommy and daddy aren't paying your bills. So you have the BDE, which is the big dick energy. But also you are still a big dick yourself mentally. Yeah, that's, how I that's it. You nailed it. You nailed it. I mean, I think that's that's right on the money. I mean, but I like I read a couple of comments here of like people that can't can't do the valley. I think you got to be like I was like seeing so much reaction before the valley came out of 
who asked for this? It's going to be horrible. It's not horrible. It just isn't no. like, but I will say it takes time. Remember Vanderpump rules didn't really catch on until season two, season three, this stuff kind of takes time, but I understand people's trepidation and I understand that it's weird. It's hard to watch any new reality show like Vanderpump Villa. It's hard to watch as well, but you got to give things time. I think this is going to be a sleeper hit. I think people are going to come more and more to this show. I think they've really set up a nice foundation. There's a lot of stuff that I think is good. Like Dodie and Jax, I really do think they are fascinating to watch. We know the Britney Jack stuff is coming and the dissolution of their marriage and their relationship. So I think this is like really one to watch that. I think people are going to come to it more and more as the season continues. And as they go into season two, I, I just, I mean, personally, I feel that, but I, I could be wrong. I also hope that season two doesn't take a long time because I think that sometimes I think that the people who are behind Bravo and the business that is NBC and it's um, obviously guys, it's a conglomerate, but I think that bad decisions can still be made at the end of the day. I think that they can be massive and bad decisions can be made. I think both things can be true at the same time. And I think that where they sometimes fumble the ball is like in this sense where Real Housewives of Dubai had season one, we haven't seen them in forever. And now we're about oh, to get season God. two in June. And it's like, people now are so just taken out of that, that they forgot. I don't even remember what happened in season one of Dubai. Like that's how long it's been. That like, I have to be I'm reminded saying. about all the characters where they're at. Like I've forgotten a lot of those things. The only like Caroline Sandberry is the only person I like still kind of follow what they're doing. Right. And that's the thing that I'm, I'm hoping that for the Valley do not do that again. I, I, I think that there's a, a good, healthy, happy medium, um, or median like ground where you can sit there and go, okay, I think Ariana was thrust into this way too quick. And I feel like they should have had a few months based off of the situation to digest and move forward. And then I also think with like the real housewives of Dubai, like what the fuck are we doing? Why are we waiting yeah. a year to film another I, season? I, it's it's that that shocks me. It really did. It's like shocking and disappointing because you want to give these shows the best chance they have to like find an audience. And when you take a show away for that long, you're not doing that show any favors. But also, I hate to get back to the Ariana thing, but I think that's just the frustrating thing is that now anything that Ariana does now. Like, it's almost like we're looking to turn her, obviously, into a villain. And I'm like, why does it have to be like, you know, black and white like that? Why does it have to be like, this is the range of emotions you go through when somebody breaks up with you? Let her have that. Let We let other characters on this show have that. But it's not even just that we won't let her have it. We need to turn everything she it, like does into a horrible thing. Now right. it's like, oh, the dog was in there, but she also left food in her own room. She left food there. So uh, she's a bad person for that. Like people feel the need to like try to like specify why she's this bad person instead of something like this horrible thing happened to her. She's getting through it. She's also keeping her head down and working. You don't see her going on every podcast, bad mouthing Lala or Sheena or even Tom. She's not mm -hmm. making memes. She's not liking con like like. All of these things, she's just keeping her head down and working. And that seems to enrage people even further. I mean, the girl can't even buy a house without people complaining about her buying a house. Oh, she waited too long, this or that. I mean, Lala and Sheena both bought houses. Where I mean, where's that same energy? Lala bought a house twice the, tw like almost twice the amount of Ariana's house. Or it was like Lala's house was 3.1, Ariana's is 1.7. You know, like I just don't see, we don't have the same energy for anyone. And Lala seems to be on this like eternal campaign to really talk some shit about Ariana. And especially coming from her background with Randall, you think she would have so much energy to really try to dissect everything that Tom Sandoval is doing. But now the conversation seems to have shifted. You know, is that Lala wants to really double, triple down on why Ariana is bad and why Ariana should, uh, you know, should really be listening to Tom and have deep conversations. Lala doesn't have a conversation with Randall without a lawyer present. That's what Ariana is trying to do. Right. And I also want to add, thank you, Elaine Hargate, 750 now watching and 201 likes. Smash that like button, guys. But I want to go back to this for a second because there are a few things that you just said. Um Based off of last night's Watch What Happens Live, the one of the hosts or one of the guests was someone who was on Bridgerton. I forgot her name, but yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. She was asked about Ariana and she said that I feel like the whole cast is treating Ariana a certain way because they are jealous of her. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, like, I'm sure. Listen, 
I mean, that's just like life in general. You always want what somebody else has and they feel like they're part of this show as well. So I'm sure their way of thinking about it is completely different than the way we think about it. But like they'll all have their opportunity at a certain point, you know, and hopefully it won't hurt them as much as this hurt Ariana personally, you know? So like, yeah, I'm glad. But also Ariana does have talent. She kicked ass on Broadway. Like she was actually good at it. She's getting a hosting gig. Like, hopefully they all, and by the way, they've all gotten opportunities, including Tom Sandoval. Like, everybody's saying Tom didn't, like, Tom now is a household name for, like, a lot of the world, and it might be as a villain, but that's still, like, you still get to bring in money do doing that. He's making money as well. So they're all having opportunities. They're just not having opportunities and being held up the way that they want to be held up, the way that they feel Ariana is being held up. So I feel like the antidote to that is to talk shit about her all the time. I don't understand that. I just don't. And this is still so quick. This is so soon after the fact of this all going down that I like last night we saw it. We saw that rage. And I think, like I said earlier, that's why Ariana doesn't want to film with this dude and doesn't want to talk to him because she's enraged by him. Do you also think, though, to add to this, that with the Valley and everything that's, you know, going on with the new show, I I'm going to give you a scenario and see if you agree with it or not. You have James Kennedy, who is now DJing massive, massive events, big venues, and also next to DJ Polly D, who made tens of millions of dollars, <laughs> right? Yeah. Then you have Ariana Maddox, who's doing Chicago Dancing with the Stars, and now the new host of Love Island, right? Then... You know, you have Lala and Sheena who's moving over to the Valley and they bought these million dollar homes in Sherman Oaks. Who knows what's happening with Katie? She'll be running with something about her. And then the two Toms, nobody ever fucking knows what's going on with them. So that's fine. Do you think that this could be where we sort of cap it off and then we start letting Ariana and James have their careers, move Lala and Sheena into the Valley, into that show, and then just kind of move on in a new direction? Or do you think that there will be a season 12? I think there will be a season 12. I think just in terms of looking at the advertising rate, the advertising dollars, remember that the Valley is like a good start, but it's not solidified. There's nothing that says the Valley comes back. Definitely. It has not been renewed yet for a second season, even though I believe that's coming very quickly. Um, so Vanderpump is still the juggernaut. Even if you don't, even if we all hate it, even if we get bad vibes every episode, it's still bringing in ad revenue. At the end of the day, TV is there to sell soap. It's not there to entertain us. It's there to show us products. And so they're getting a really high ad rate every... In fact, they did away with one minute of every episode this season so they could add more commercials to it because I tracked like their ad rates of like last year it was 43-minute episodes. This year, there's a lot of 42-minute episodes because they added the extra dollar into ad rates. So even if this is on its last dying breath, you are still going to see some version of Vanderpump Rules. Now, is Ariana and James and all them going to be on it who's who's to tell like right. i don't know that's the jigsaw i don't know and from a producer standpoint they're not thinking the way i'm thinking because i think they truly are on this trying like they're bringing on people to like support tom they're giving tom every opportunity to show that he has been wronged as well i feel and right. he blows it every time because he'll then go rogue and do like new york times interviews or nick vile podcast and it'll really hurt what they're trying they're helping him and he's right. like hurting himself by himself. So I don't know. Like, I don't think they're obvious. Like, I don't think they hate Ariana, but it certainly doesn't seem like they like her sometimes, but that's the main conflict of the show. They're like, okay, people hate Tom enough. Like, let's try to swing it back the other way. It seems like Lala is like a producer's pet at this point. Like she'll do anything like that scene last week with like Tom screaming and Lala going like, yeah, let's work on our friendship. I like Lala almost apologized to Tom last week. I'm like, why would you ever like, I'm sorry you were triggered by Randall, but that doesn't mean you owe Tom an apology. Like, am I living on the same planet? I feel like no. gaslit by this show entirely because I, I don't understand what's <laughs> happening. Like, I, I just feel like I'm on a, 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 but at the same time, Sandoval and Schwartz, so entertaining to watch. Like Sandoval, even just in his stupidest scenes, you're just like, this is so ridiculous. It's it's highly watchable. And Schwartz is like that aw shucks, good guy all the time. But you even find out 11 years ago, he was cheating on Katie, potentially with Sheena. And that's just like, uh, it's another day on Vanderpump. Like they, they, they hold these secrets for so long. And then it's weird when they choose to like dole them out. I don't know, you guys, it's such a, it's such a weird show, but it's, I think it's definitely coming back. Whether Ariana comes back with it, I don't know. But just remember, Love Island is produced by NBC Universal as well. So that's in the same family. Like that, they, they still are working with Ariana in some way. So there is potential. 
Yeah, sorry. That was a long one. Sorry, you guys. That was a so long-winded answer. But yeah, I think there's total potential. <laughs> sorry, you guys. <laughs> no, we love it. Well, with that, Ryan, God, this is, I cannot believe we're almost at an hour. But I yeah. did want to ask you, are you pleasantly, this is my last question for you. Are you pleasantly surprised with the Valley based off of everything you knew at the time of the trailer going into the first episode to what you've seen so far? Do you think that this is a show that is coming in with longevity? Yeah, I do. I really do. Actually. I really think I can already see the second season. I, I really, really do. It's not like my favorite show in the world, but I think there's a lot to build on. And I think that's what you would be looking for as a viewer. And as somebody producing the show is, do we have enough? And I think they really do have enough. I think oh. there is, this is going to be, I don't know. What do you, I mean, do you, do you agree? No, I definitely agree. I think that the Jesse and Michelle, I think that they're great TV. I think that Janet has really stepped in. I think that she's great TV. I think that Zach is like a spineless jellyfish with a hidden agenda. And I love it because he's just like a snake. He reminds me, do you remember the show recess, the cartoon? Yeah. Do you remember Randall? <laughs> well, I mean, now that you're doing it. Yeah. I mean, what that's been so long. Yeah. He was with like <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. I feel like that's that is who Zach reminds me of. I'm loving seeing Jasmine. I remember Jasmine. I like the dynamics. I think it's fun. I think it's different. I think it's fresh. I think that they have longevity. Yes. I actually think that we're rounding out towards the end of Vanderpump rules, but I could see where everybody could easily disperse. The only three people I would be concerned about would be Katie Maloney, Tom, and Tom as far as like what does life look after look like after because i think that sheena and brock and lala can easily fit into the valley it makes sense i think that james is going to skyrocket and i think that ariana is going to have a real career outside of reality television and then yeah. lisa vanderpump is going to go spitfire every freaking tv concept that she has while dealing with caesars because she doesn't really have to do anything except design these places i'm basically. opening wolf in lake tahoe it's a sexy it's restaurant with nicolaine wolf no more <laughs> aye, aye, aye. but if they don't know ryan will you let them know because i'm gonna bring it up right here where yeah you guys so you. so bad it's in good with ryan Bailey. Yeah, with Terry today. If you want to watch it, it's on our YouTube channel. If you want to listen to it, I always add more stuff in the podcast, the audio version. These are just like straight up uh, interviews and like recaps. Um, but yeah, we try to be silly, but there's some really good interviews in there. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of good guests recently. We had the two directors from Quiet on Set, the Nickelodeon expose that came out. We oh, had nice. Kate Chastain on recently. We have Carlos King next week, which was fun. We... Uh, I mean, just a lot of good guests and stuff. So check it out. I'm sure you guys, you know, but if also it's not your thing, that's awesome. Just thanks for being here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it's always a pleasure to do anything with Adam. Uh, he's just always a great guy. So thank you for being here and, and watching us today. I appreciate that. Definitely. And if you guys, by the way, thanks, man. Um, Sharon watch says watch you all the time, Ryan. But also if you guys don't want to watch on YouTube, as you guys can see right here, you can go anywhere you get your podcast and listen. Oh yeah. We just had Vanderpump Villa. We had Marciano and Hannah. If you, if you starting to watch Vanderpump Villa, we had two of the, the oh, people yeah, right that here. used to date on that show. They were just on. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, if you want to learn more about that show, they were, uh, interviewed them on Tuesday's episode. So check it out. Sweet. Yeah, guys, but thank you guys. No, definitely. Ryan, thank you. Um, if you guys haven't already, go ahead, smash that like button, show some love. Love you guys, and we will see you a little bit later this week.